Hey guys, Dave here, and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so last episode we got it running, but these motors, they're so small, they did, they did enough uh, power to move the chair by itself, but once I sat in it, even though it's balanced, they didn't have enough power because of this. Uh, there, there's no mechanical advantage. It's so, it's so hard to do at this point. Um, they have to work so hard. I could basically put my hand up on top of the chair and, and stop it from moving. And it's just because the motors are, are they're windshield wiper motors. <laughs> Probably the best thing to do would be to actually pay more than 10 bucks for a motor. So I bought these things maybe 15 years ago. They work. They're basically for Halloween props to make the heads move or arms move and stuff like that. Lightweight stuff. But um, I think we can still do it. Now, if you've got an existing sim rig frame, you probably don't want to hack it up. So what I come up with is just a, a, an extension that you can bolt on. Now, it's not production or anything, and I don't even know if it's going to work. It may work, but basically we're going to be taking uh, inch square tubing, and I'm going to be shoving it here. You'll be able to bolt it on. Well. I'm going to bolt it on so I can remove it. I'm going to come back here a little ways and I'm going to bring up um, a little bit more mechanical advantage by mounting the motors back here. It should work because by extending this out a little bit and mounting the motors over here, we're going to be able to run a piece of conduit between here. We're going to have a lot more mechanical advantage than just running it straight here. If you, you wanted to, you could actually, if you had a wall or something here, you could mount this whole situation on the wall just to push, and that would provide uh, an, uh, the most mechanical advantage to tip the chair. Now, let's take a look at this real quick. All right, so the lever is actually this. The, the longer the lever, the easier it's gonna be for the motors to push. So the lever is actually gonna be the top of this chair and I'm going to try to hook maybe I'll just run a piece of metal across here a couple bolts or straight through and it's going to be so high up that when we mount the motors a little bit further back that giant lever is going to allow those motors to have a lot more mechanical advantage now let's take a look real quick at my three degree of freedom rig so on my three degree of freedom rig the seat frame or this this particular frame is the giant lever and I have them attached to some pretty beefy motors but it moves the whole thing so it'll move all the weight way out here plus the plus everything else so these these have to be a lot stronger motors I bet you if we put those motors which I'm not going to do it but if we put those crab pot motors in place of these little teeny tiny ones here they would have enough uh, strength to move just the seat mover the way it is. But So we're going to use a mechanical advantage by attaching up high to the giant lever to move um, everything on the U-joint. Once again, I have a U-joint here, and we have our U-joint right over here. So uh, let's get to it. I'm going to go ahead and start I'm gonna take, take it apart a little bit and just start... Uh, fabbing it up. So this, I'm not going to make an entire seat frame here. I'm going to use the, the top section as, as the lever. On the other rig, I actually made a full frame, but on this one, I'm just going to attach it here. So we need a piece of metal about 10, in, 10 and a half inches long, and that's, that's where we're going to attach those two uh, uh, tie rod ends up top. Let's cut that out. Oh, and real quick, if you're thinking... Oh my God, this is so much work. Well, basically we paid nothing for it so far, maybe a hundred bucks. And you guys put more into your steering wheels and pedals than like this whole thing. And my philosophy is you should put more money into your, your actual motion <laughs> platform than just the steering wheels and pedals. Maybe just keep, uh, treat them as equal partners because when you're relying on it, at least as much as you're relying on everything else. You want it to turn out cool and be reliable. So, you know, if you do have to pop for a little bit of money, 
I would do it. I did it. I'm happy. All right, so 10 and a half inch. This is inch square tubing, and it's a six foot piece, so. I want to check out some welding videos other than this, but I do use acetone. Um, first, you get you remove the whatever the the black stuff that they manufacture this with, and then I rub it down with some alcohol or acetone just to clean it, and I'll do it twice. Um, and that's on both both of these parts before I try to weld it because if you don't do it It's probably not going to work very good All right, so I just have it uh, Clamped in here. I'm gonna put some tack welds and double check to see if it's twisting should be okay Here's the last little bit, and then we'll uh, grind it down. Not the best, but I'll take it. Yeah, it's pretty hot. All right, so uh, we're welded here, 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 and now we can uh go ahead and mount this we're gonna put two pieces so one piece here one piece there um one on either side but i don't have the proper uh screws that i need or bolts that i need so i'm gonna have to measure it so i'm gonna need So to do this right, I'm going to need two, so it's going to be two and a half inches. I'm going to need a three inch, uh, half inch bolt. So unfortunately, I got to run to the store to get that, um, but I'll be back. Well, okay, so I've got the both sides on there. I got the right uh, bolts. And it should just allow this to be mounted exactly where I need it. So here's, here's the side against my back. Um, what I ended up buying was just type of a, a lag, um, yeah, I think it was a lag bolt, whatever, a round head, and I just tack welded both of those on here, flat piece of metal, so it's not gonna poke me in the head. And right here, yeah, I mean, this caught fire from some other thing I was doing. But this is going to be plenty sturdy just to put the uh, the, the uh, tie rod ends on both sides. Okay, so that, you know, that was a little bit tricky. We had to do some stuff. This should be probably about the same. I'm um, going to go ahead and measure out and make the, uh, in the motor mounts. And then we'll take some of this uh, half inch steel conduit. We'll cut it. And hey, we're back in business. So let's get going on the... Uh, the frame extension. All right, guys, so here's the idea. I went ahead and welded up this frame that's gonna fit just outside of the, the sim, sim rig frame. And if we drill a couple holes and we line it up pretty good, we can actually adjust it backwards if we need to. Um, if it's not strong enough, we'll pull it back a little bit. But right now, I think this will work perfect. All right, so right now, we're out at one foot, so 12 inches further out. We would need probably, I don't know, 30 inch, uh, 30 inch strut, something like that. But we have the ability to move it either in or if I drill the holes correctly, um, we could move it further back out if we needed to. We could move it way out here, just to add a little bit more and make it adjustable. 
Now we're going to just take some simple uh, steel and probably figure out how to mount the motors. We'll mount it probably like this. We'll make um, something here. Um, basically, I'm going to use the same template here, so it's going to be really easy. I'll just put the piece, piece of steel here, mark it on the other side, and boom, I got it. Um, both sides, do that, and finally, uh, we'll have to deal with the potentiometers, but we'll make it part of the mount. So let me take a look at the steel that I got ready. Basically, I just have a piece of sheet steel I got at the Lowe's Home Improvement Store. I just use it for just pretty much everything. It's a real thin gauge, but if we if we either build, uh, weld like an angle to it, it'll be nice and strong, or if we bend it, it'll be nice and strong. Once again, I'm just trying to get this so that it's a little bit adjustable. Um, so I used a whole uh, section of this uh, 48 inch by one inch uh, square tubing, welded it, made sure it was square, and it presses up tight against the frame. Honestly, this, seems, this is probably gonna work. Um, we don't know yet, but once we, once we do, we're gonna use this steel, con uh, steel electric conduit to uh, connect from the top to here. I have these tie rods that I took off. I did grind them down. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to twist them off. If I can't twist them, I'll just cut it with uh, the angle grinder just a little bit and it should come right off. I mean, I've used these a couple different times. Put one here, one down here. I mean, like this and this, same type of deal. We'll just make the conduit whatever we need. Well, that's it pretty much for today. Um, next video, I'm gonna go ahead and make the, the motor mounts and connect it up. And since we already know that the software and everything is working the way it's supposed to, it shouldn't be too much work other than just making decent motor mounts um, and connecting them up to the top to get the mechanical advantage that these little these little baby motors need. <clears throat> Once again, if you know, I would appreciate you subscribing, liking to the video. I am trying to grow the channel, and I got a lot of bunch. Uh, well, I don't. I'm not doing a lot of other things right now, but I do have a lot of plans. So hopefully, something will interest you. And if you found value out of this, appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna go watch Formula One. Haas? I don't know. Probably not going to do that good. But maybe next year. Dave out.